Coming up on Mountain News This Morning, an Eastern Kentucky family gets one step closer to getting justice for the death of, the, of their son. And the search on one is on for one inmate who managed to escape while being transported in Louisville. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Chas Gayhart. It is 531 on Friday, May 19th. Brandon, it's starting to feel a little bit more like summer, finally. It's getting closer. Yeah. And you think this morning and is interesting and, and, and kind of getting warmer. Next week <laughs> will be very interesting, especially <laughs> late next week when it comes to those summer preview temperatures. All right, let's take a look and see what's going on. Heading down to I-75 at Corbin, a few uh, tractor trailers and some other traffic moving along down that way. One of our warmer spots this morning, 63. At the London Corbin Airport, Williamsburg, Whitley County Airport, Tucker Guthrie Airport over in Harlan as well, all 63. And the Clyde Thomas Round County more, uh, uh, Airport up near Moorhead this morning. So again, a lot of 60s out there, very few 50s. Most of our cluster kind of in the eastern counties. I guess it's about half and half, though. You see Manchester and Jackson close to 60, but Hazard's at 55, Wise at 54, and the coldest spot in the region is 51 in Grundy. Now, there's a lot of upper 60s and close to 70 across most of the state and region, but across the river, Cincinnati, 57, Carbondale, Illinois, is 59, and Hazard, of course, one of the cooler spots on that map at 55. For the next few hours, though, we're going to head up. Sun and clouds will take us into the 80-degree range again this afternoon. Should be a fairly nice day. But tonight, things start to change. I'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. Chess. Thanks, Brandon. Wesley Hook was murdered almost three years ago, and his family has been waiting for answers ever since. On Thursday, Eric Delion, De De one of the three people arrested and charged in connection with his murder, was sentenced for his role in kidnapping Hook. Hook's mother shared her victim impact statement with the court in Floyd County before Delion was sentenced to 30 years in prison. I think that punishments in Kentucky aren't as harsh as they should be, but you know, but I think, I think, yeah. I think it's fair. I mean, he'll probably, I'll probably be dead when he gets out, so. Barbara Hook says at the end of the day, she just wants answers about what happened to her son as they await the outcome for Enos Little, the third person charged in connection to Hook's death. A deadly crash halted traffic for much of the morning yesterday in Richmond. The crash happened around mile marker 91 on I-75. Richmond police say they were called out to the scene just after 7 yesterday morning for a two-car crash. The Madison County coroner identified 46-year-old Billy Jolly as the victim from Fleming County. He was pronounced dead at the scene. One Southern Kentucky man is facing charges in a child pornography case. On Wednesday, troopers from the Kentucky State Police Electronic Crime Branch arrested Nathan Grandin on his, at his home in Monticello. Police say the 57-year-old Wayne County man was sharing a sexually explicit image of someone underage on the Internet. Following that discovery, police used a search warrant to confiscate the equipment used to the crime to send to the KSP Forensic Lab for further investigation. Grandin is currently charged with one count of distributing matter portraying a minor under the age of 12 in a sexual performance, which is a felony. He was taken to the Wayne County Detention Center. New search warrant documents have been released in connection to the mass shooting at the Old National Bank in Louisville last month. The documents originally sealed until recently show search warrants for the shooter's phone, emails, text, and electronic communication. A detective believes Connor Sturgeon had talked about his deteriorating mental state. The documents say he had tried to end his life around the same time the year before. His mental state is something the documents say he talked about with his girlfriend as well. The paperwork does not say he mentioned his specific plans to her. The warrants also talk about the manifesto, but that was not publicly released. A manhunt is underway in Louisville for an escaped inmate. Louisville police say 31-year-old Norman Wolf jumped out of the window of a transport SUV. Officers from several agencies were seen searching an area on I-265 and I-71. Wolf was in custody for burglary and possession of a handgun by a felon. Several schools in that area kept children inside as a precaution as police searched for the escapee. Back in our region, as we near the 10-month mark since the July flood, many community members in the Buckhorn community are asking questions as to why it's taking so long for the school system to begin reconstruction at the school. Perry County Schools CFO Jody Maggard 
says he understands the frustration, but says the school system is working as quick as possible to get the work done. It is a lengthy process. There is none of this that is moving at what I would say is, is even a normal pace. It is a slow process. And I believe with that comes a lot of, well, they're not going to do it. Buckhorn will never reopen. Robinson will never be rebuilt. None of those have ever been discussed by our board. Maggard says the reconstruction of Buckhorn is expected to begin in mid-June. For months, students from across the area have been working on projects to submit to Cedar Student Fair in, Pike, in Pikeville. On Thursday, more than 150 of them were on display. WYMT's Keaton Hall shows us how one school used the fair as an opportunity to share their story. From economic proposals to original songs, the Cedar Future of Work in Appalachia Student Fair saw hundreds of submissions from students across the region. This is the regional fair, the, the local fairs, and the local being the schools that did participate, they have their own fair. And then from those, they chose a certain number of uh, projects to bring to the regional fair. The best projects from throughout the region were on display at the University of Pikeville on Thursday. Pikeville middle schooler Javen Dotson built a website highlighting the benefits of tourism. It's what I see as the future of Pike County, what could be the future if we look in towards a tourism-based economy. Buckhorn High Schooler Shayla Riley helped submit a group report on the effect the floods had on her community. We interviewed some teachers at the school that were affected and we actually made it into a book. Whenever the flood was happening, you didn't really have time to sit and think about what actually happened. So um, whenever you, we were doing this project and really talking to everybody else, you got to realize what you actually went through and how tragic it really was. In total, 17 students from Buckhorn sent in projects. Yeah, the, the flood showed us our weaknesses. Um, how would the kids want to improve these weaknesses, you know, as far as in, the, in your own community, you know, and getting them to think like that they're, they are our future. Buckhorn staff member James Eversole says they plan on publishing the book their students made. In Pikeville, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. Cedar has held student fairs for 30 years, recently partnering with SOAR and Pikeville Medical Center, focusing on rebuilding the local workforce. And two students at the Mountain Arts Center will be featured on Michael Jonathan's Wood Songs Kids. 13-year-old Jonathan Moore of Knott County and 11-year-old Adeline Ramey of Johnson County have both been performing for many years, whether at church or on stage at the, at the Mountain Arts Center. The two will be traveling to Lexington next month and perform their original songs on Wood Songs Kids. Moore and Ramey, who were already featured on the Wood Songs Old Time Radio Hour in late April and early May, say they were a bit nervous during their first appearance on the show. You know, I was really nervous at first because, I mean, it's all over the world. But it was like a really great opportunity to get my songs out there. And it was just really fun. The two say it's very exciting to know their original songs are being played around the globe. And just ahead this morning, Harrison Ford gets emotional as he receives a special award for his lifetime of acting at the Cannes Film Festival. And hey, we're tracking some approaching rain as a cold front starts to move into the region this weekend. I'll have more on what we're facing in about three minutes.